After posting a video walkthrough of how I built this uh, arcade cabinet, I got a lot of questions about the operating system and gameplay. So I wanted to make a video showing off RGB Pi OS. So the operating system goes along with part of the hardware solution, which is uh, GPIO to SCART cable. And SCART is a European television standard. Uh, a lot of European televisions can accept SCART directly, which is a raw um, RGB input. We don't have that here in America. We have uh, component, we have composite, uh, we have S-video, we have BNC, and once you have the raw signal coming out from the, from the Raspberry Pi uh, via the GPIO to SCART cable, you can use converters to convert it to a number of signals. So on my arcade cabinet I'm going um, GPIO to SCART and then SCART to component into my television. The main aim of the software is to output a true 240p signal emulating the um, original resolution and uh, frame rate of the um, intended gameplay for these games. I'm going to apologize in advance, I could not get my DSLR frame rate to sync with the output of my television for some reason, so that's why you see some of this light flickering going on, but I can assure you um, the image is crisp and clear in person and that's not part of the software or hardware. So let's start with a walkthrough of some of the um, main menu options in RGB Pi OS. There's a display setting which um, lets you adjust your refresh rate, um, your screen position, including overscan. Your refresh rate, 50 hertz, 60 hertz. Your screen rotation, if you're trying to build a Tate style cabinet where you need your TV uh, rotated sideways, this will allow you to set the rotation of your image. You can choose the screen saver, I leave mine on the default setting, but I think you can also use uh, video previews from your games as the screen saver if you'd like. In the sound options, uh, you have a full EQ, digital EQ you can choose from. I keep my volume at the max because I control my volume uh, through an external amplifier. I have options for music. Options for system sounds. and there's some built-in music tracks that you can choose between. I tend to keep these all off. Your control settings are where you can connect a Bluetooth controller and you can also adjust your button mapping similar to how you would on RetroPie. Your network settings enable Wi Fi, Wi Fi name, Wi Fi password. System settings. I'm running all my games off an external USB device, so that's what I have plugged in here and enabled. options for language, time zone. You can change uh, the list type of how you want your games displayed, whether you want them grouped by folders. I tend to keep mine on list because that's the fastest kind of snappiest menu option. You can also change your skin. There are lots of different skin options. And RGB Pi OS on their wiki actually provides you with 
a set of images um, so you can create your own custom skin very easily. I currently have 19,000 games loaded on this. 414 game plays, 21 hours spent playing in my top system is the arcade section. And you can also choose to shut down the system from the menu. If I jump back here I can show off a couple of the, the different skins that people have made. Uh, some of them are pretty cool, but I tend to just use the default Terra skin. Uh, it's still the cleanest, uh, easiest on the eyes skin that I've found so far. It has a clean background, so it's easy to see the game art through it. The main menu is organized by game system. Just like RetroPie, there's any number of systems you can add to this. There's even a video player option where I have a couple of movies loaded. Uh, the only two movies you would ever need on a retro game system. The video player interface is actually really interesting. You can use the joystick to skip ahead and jump to different parts of the film. You can even use the up and down control, I believe, to adjust the volume while you watch the film. I keep all my games organized on a favorites list, which actually gets backed up to a CSV file every time you exit the system on your external USB drive. You can see here currently all of the games in my favorites list are organized by name. So as I'm scrolling through you can see we're switching between different systems that the games are for. But you can quickly jump into a menu and sort by name, by year, by number of players, by system, which is what I usually prefer to keep it on. That way it organizes all your games in your favorites list by system. You can use hotkeys to jump between systems within your favorites list, which is really nice. You can use the left and right joystick to skip between systems as well or use the hotkey buttons to cycle through different game systems or just use the joystick up and down to step through individual games depending on how you have it sorted. Here you can sort by name again and use the hotkeys to then jump between um, alphabet letters or you can sort by year which is fun. It'll organize all your games by the date they were created in the metadata. You can see here as I'm stepping through individual games the game art is actually displayed behind the text, but there's a hotkey that lets you disable any text overlays at any given time. So if you press and hold that key, you can quickly turn off the display text overlay and just step through the game art itself full screen. Disabling that hotkey just puts the video um, text overlay back back on top. RGB Pi supports video snaps. I personally don't use them. I just prefer to see um, single image game art. I feel like it makes the navigating through the games and the menus just that much faster. I want to close out this video with some close-up gameplay just so you can see the uh, tasty scan lines that this RGB to component video setup gives. And setting up RGB Pi couldn't be any easier. It's just like Retro Pi or any other um, kind of retro gaming system. You flash an SD card, you put it into your Raspberry Pi, boot it up, drop your ROMs in the ROM folder, and you're good to go.